Welcome back to Behavioral Finance and Fintech. I am Andy Kim, your Dr. Finance. And in this part of my lecture, I'm going to give you some brief overview of uh, my part of the research, which is about uh, biometric data, including face and voice of the people, and how is it related to the risk preference of those persons. So let's go. So increasing importance of biometric data is the point I'm trying to make, right? You know, why? Because some of the biological information, like uh, testosterone, right, all these kind of things, are related to your risk preference. And then if there is a way to measure or approximate those testosterone level, right, then why don't we just use it, okay, is the idea. Um, it shows up in many parts of your body actually. One part is your hand, the fingers, and then another is your face, and the other is your voice. Of course, there may be other parts of them, but all these parts are something that we can make a database. Um, so Face of Risk is a paper that I uh, work on, worked on, and then I had my television interviews and a PBS in the United States of America, which is like EBS of Korea, uh, like uh, the whole country level uh, cable TV uh, network, right? And then it's all about, it's about a documentary for, you know, uh, very knowledgeable documentary program um, for economists and all these people. So this, uh, I'm going to play this one later on, uh, but that's face related study. And there we study the face recognition, not only that, but we recognize the face automatically using Python code and by uh, uh, getting into the 68 different landmarks of the faces and then measuring the facial width to height ratio, okay, width to height ratio like this. And then um, it is, turns out it's deeply related to the risk preference of the guy. Usually the research in biology or this, uh, uh, the neuroendocrinology has been done using male sample. So the, to the extent it is guys photographed, um, you can pretty much tell how much risk seeking the guy is or status seeking we say it, socially dominant status. And here what you see is the average face picture of the U.S. CEOs in uh, biggest uh, 1,500 companies, in publicly traded companies. And we input all these pictures and then automatically recognize those landmarks and measure their facial width to height ratio like this and see how much it is associated with the risk of the company and M&A behavior of the companies. And then as it turns out, not only me, I mean, my paper, we find out that the more masculine faced guys, because they are more status seeking, higher social status, they have to achieve it. They tend to uh, be more acquisitive, try to acquire more company, try to pursue more bigger size of the company and uh, try to be more, I mean, risk seeking so that the volatility of their stock is bigger. OK, and financial leverage is big, uh, higher and things like that. Now, not only myself, but also finance guys, right? In top finance guys are interested in this. And accounting top guys are also interested in these as well because fraud detection is a big thing in accounting research. And this year in JFQA, top journal in finance, uh, Melvin Teo and Yan Lu. Uh, Melvin Teo is Singaporean uh, genius professor. And then he had a publication about this paper uh, about hedge fund managers' facial masculinity. There he studies uh, 2,400 plus uh, hedge fund managers' facial pictures. And then what they find is that highly masculine face, which is wider face, okay? Napjakkan orgul. It's like a, the height is not, you know, height is not that much affected by the testosterone, but the width is affected by the testosterone, right? Height is about this length, okay? The wider face guys, um, do they deliver alpha? Supposedly they are 
alpha male. They want to pursue bigger, social, higher social status. Um, as it turns out, it's the opposite. High facial masculinity guys pursue dominant uh, and high social status too much so that they are more likely to take excessive risk or to make mistake in uh, managing funds. Okay, That's what they find. As it turns out, their alpha is lower in fu fu the fund. What is those alpha? Don't worry about it. We're going to learn about it in our class, right? Or you must have learned it in your finance 101, basic finance class. The, yeah, but we're going to talk about that. And more likely to do fire sales, block deal. Once, I mean, like fire sale is like abruptly you have to sell all those assets because of bad reasons. Uh, maybe uh, here is an interesting case that is very directly relevant. Um, the next page. So it's going to be explained right there. Um, the next page. Bill Huang, right? Bill Huang. Archigos. In March 2021, this year, you must remember what happened to Archegos. Um, Google search it, right? Um, Bill Huang is a big fish, big guy among Korean American society, right? He was a big investor um, ever since like a Peregrine period, right? 1997 and that period and then made tons of money and then he was managing hedge fund family office right and then um march end of march there was a surprising news in bloomberg and everywhere in financial society and then there was a, a block deal coming from bill huang's family office the wall street investor who lost 20 billion dollars in in days is a devout christian who gave way millions to good causes you go ahead and read this one right um as it turns out he was managing a hedge fund of his of himself called the family office right not even a hedge fund because it's you know only for one family and then he had it had such a big assets right 30 billion dollars or something the thing is, he leveraged up the position so much so that um, levered up, right? Your equity is 100, and then you borrow uh, five times of it, right? Leverage. Well, typical hedge fund, they lever up by like two times or something, but five times, it's excessive. Why did it go through like that? Well, he was, you know, status seeking. You see it in his face like this. Is facial uh, masculinity turns out if you throw it into my website, right? And you will realize it's FWHR with height ratio is 1.857. And then you can measure those things in my website um, like this, right? You can literally take your photograph, selfie yourself, and then directly upload it. Korea University guys are doing it in their MBA program thanks to Professor Yi Hansang Gyosunim and then many people were doing it. So why don't you do it yourself right now? Okay, take your picture and then browse and then upload it in your uh, computer, right? In, in this website. And then it tells you about your facial masculinity. And here I upload my faces over there let me try this one this is my face upload it right and then it will show like the following like this okay and then it shows the fwhr score 1.7 mine is 1.7 and then bill huang's is what 1.7 almost nine right this is very masculine face okay and then just like uh, or bigger than bigger than usual korean big company ceos right and then close to or, or bigger than the numbers for the u.s ceos right very risk-seeking guy and then leveraging up that much position and then the thing is he was investing into a handful of only a handful of stocks related to china 
and then telecommunications, five to six different stocks. Come on, $30 billion of asset? Then you have to diversify enough. Quantitative trading guys need to help you, okay? Your fintech service, they should work for this guy so that they, he could diversify, but he was not following it. He was just concentrating those assets into those limited small sector so that once that sector was smashed, then the, his portfolio value was going down like crazy. The thing is, he was leveraging up so much, right? Uh, five times so that he would get what? Margin call from the security houses. Margin call is important, 20% or something. And wiping off all you invested and then get your margin call, what would you say? Would you stay there or would you sell it? You have to sell it, right? You are forced to sell all those securities. That's what we call a fire sale, right? Um, and then accordingly, uh, they had to go through this fire sale process, which tumbled down the security price even further. And then those investment banks, they were lending these money to this Archegos of Bill Huang, they got screwed up together, okay? So that's the debacle associated with this uh, family office. So people talk about this family office problem, uh, how to regulate this guy or not, right? Um, but my, to my eyes, this is about facial masculinity. And by, if you look at this guy's facial masculinity, those investment banks, before joining, getting into those total return swap, TRS or whatever, they should have been cautious about this. Given that the new research finding by Melvin Teo is there, right? Prime brokerage, we call it, right? They should pay much more attention to the facial masculinity of the hedge fund managers, okay? Not only that, not only that, the academic research a couple of years ago by Steve Dimock in NUS, they found out that the best way to avoid um, financial debacle is to avoid those financial or fund managers who was caught by the police, like uh, uh, fraud experience, fraud experience, right? The guy, Bill Huang, over here, turns out that he got, he got caught by SEC in 2012 by, you know, insider trading concern, right? He was involved with China stocks, right? Uh, was it Gongsangeneng, uh, ICBC or something? Those stocks, he was trading and making profit because he was trading on insider information so he had to pay huge amount of penalties in the first place in 2013 given that those goldman sachs and investment banks they should have paid much more attention and then should have been more cautious and cut off and then should not have lent any money to him but they ignored it and then just went on and they paid the price like this okay so there are many ways. It's about KYC, know your client. How to better assess the risk preference of your client or track record of your client. Very, very important issues from FinTech perspective and your facial masculinity gets very important in that respect, okay? And Another thing about facial masculinity is about this contrast between the two CEOs or the founders of the Korea's biggest ICT companies called Naver and Kakao, okay? I told you that facially masculine guys, they seek higher social status. I have to be king. And then more feminine faced guys like me 1.7 or something um they are not that much status seeking that much that fast right interesting case is about these two guys right Lee Hajin versus Kim Bomsu Kakao over here his founder and then Daver the founder drastically different face 
right? It's like North Pole to South Pole difference, right? And you see Davers case, they have been growing rather slowly over 20 years horizon. Now it's number four or number three in terms of market cap. Uh, whereas Kim Bom Su, okay, um, is now, it's a short history, 10 years history. And then right now is number three in terms of market cap for Kakao. They beat Naver recently, right? Um, I, it has a lot to do with his the founder's risk preference. And you can pretty much see it by looking at his face. Why is it important? If you are looking at, if you are managing venture capital, yes, my alarm says that I have to shut up. Okay, 15 minutes passed. Now, why is it important? If you are venture capitalist, right? Then you have a portfolio of venture companies, right? Future neighbor, future cacao guys are over there under your portfolio management. Then you will have to think about what kind of guy this is, right? And the trouble with the venture is that those small, small ventures, they have short history. You don't know what the heck is going to happen. And in the end, it gets into that person, the founder, the character of the person. How would you quantify the person's character? One way of doing it is by looking at his face, taking photograph of him, and then throw it into my website and throws out those facial width to height ratio. If it is bigger number, he's going to be more like a Kim Bom Su. Fast growing, but seeking much more risk, which means it could be dangerous as well. And then seeking more M&As, right? If it is more like Yi Hae Jin, it is going to be more uh, risk averse, but more conservative. It does not tell whether this guy will be king or not. Whether this guy will be the CEO or not, it doesn't tell. But the style, it tells a lot about it. Very easy way of doing it. But why don't you use it? And I am here for you. I am the one who pioneered in this field. So why don't you leverage me? That's it. And as it turns out, there's a new field called social signal processing. Okay? The engineering guys. You guys are familiar with this signal processing or image processing or shinochari in Korean terminology, right? Um, what kind of signal? It depends on the context, right? And uh, over the past uh, 15 years or something, this field has been developed very much, so much, so fast. Um, they are trying to quantify those nonverbal communications of the, the per persons, right? Social signal, the facial expression, a voice pitch, or hand gestures, right? Kinetic research, right? They have been doing it. Voice pitch, intonation, facial expression, gestures, all these kind of things. Multi, you have now multimedia, big data, the motion pictures, right? You have it with you. Why don't you leverage it? And then extract some meaningful information out of it. That's social signal processing. And that's why I'm, I am fascinated right now. Okay. And social psychology, you need to understand the psychology of it and engineering as well, right? Now, I'm just giving you a taste of it, not going into those engineering detail. Some of you from engineering department, you have better understanding about this one, I guess. Um, the fintech program is much more about, you know, going into the engineering part of it. My class is about giving a taste of what it is like and then psychologically, what is the direction that we should focus on? That's why we should, you should take this class um, before mastering those concepts of fintech or whatever. Okay? And welcome. Behavioral finance is all about this, right? The state of the art engineering technology being used for this kind of social signal processing in fact. Now, the first week of uh, fintech and behavioral finance, this is a time to conclude, right? Um, fintech is very important. It has been important uh, for bankers ever since, you know, 
we human beings started banking, right? Why? Bankers need to have the information the fastest. Information is money, right? So 300 years ago, the state-of-the-art fintech was flying these pigeons, right? Pigeons, you see this, you know, box uh, that you can carry those, that can carry those letters and things like that. And as it turns out, you must know this name called the Rothschild family, which is the biggest uh, banking dynasty in 19th century Europe, the whole world, right? Um, why did they succeed, right? These are the five brothers in uh, Rothschild family's five brothers uh, working in London, Paris, uh, Frankfurt, and then Vienna, and then Naples, right? Five different cities talking to each other very frequently, very fast. How? Well, they had their own fastest uh, pigeon network and then courier services of their own. And then they carried the secret information not using European languages, but uh, Jewish language, which is Yiddish or Hebrew, right? Writing letters in secret like that. Um, so that's how they got successful and earned tons of money, right? British consul or treasury bond price, if they are traded at different price in London and Paris, one could long and one could short and make money out of it, okay? Arbitrage, they could do it, they did it, and they were innovative in that way. So they made a lot of money, um, success factor, right? So nothing is new, right? There's nothing new under the sun. Fintech is just these days phenomena, we call it fintech, but it has been there. And then what is important right now about fintech is that um, the speed of development in technology is exponential or explosive, right? So, and then it's getting more personalized for individual persons, right? Individual investors. So that's a difference. Um, and then lastly, if you don't try to learn fintech, right? What happens? See Rothschild family, right? They are not as big as before. They are just one of the many investment banks, you know, well established, but that not that much big compared to what they used to be, manipulating those global politics in 19th century. Nowadays, it's not. Why? Because they failed to keep pace with the development of information technology in 20th century, beginning of 20th century. Competitors were using typewriters and then telegrams and telegraphs and things like that, fastly communicating and buying and selling. But these guys kept on using pigeons and uh, their courier services and writing their letters, handwritten ones, and then placing stamp and sending it. Very romantic, um, very slow and losing money. So that's why. So if you want to become like that, right, like a fossil, then drop this course, <laughs> right? Now forget about fintech. But if you don't want to do like that, if you want to survive, right, and then thrive, then you have to learn about fintech. And most importantly, you have to learn about behavioral finance because it guides you to where to put your energies of your engineering technique. So I hope you liked it. And then Hope to see you next week. Bye-bye.